Frontier have finally added the Tarbosaurus from Hidden Adventures Camp Cretaceous into Jurassic World Evolution 2 for us park builders to use, and with its inclusion, an idea has came to my mind's eye. Hello everybody and welcome to another Jurassic World Evolution 2 video. How are you guys enjoying the latest DLC of the Cretaceous Predator Pack? I am enjoying it quite well myself, and in today's video guys we're going to be going over the Tarbosaurus and giving you guys a tips and tricks video for a little speed build on a Tarbosaurus themed exhibit inspired by a certain scene in the interactive episode of Camp Cretaceous's very own hidden adventure. And while my original plan was to use the inspiration of the actual Hidden Adventure exhibit from the Netflix interactive episode, I actually decided to take inspiration from the very intro of said interactive episode, and decided that for this enclosure, my main theme for the Tarbosaurus enclosure was going to be that of its nest, where we see Darius in the beginning of the interactive episode. And I decided to make it, um... A little bit more extravagant than, you know, most exhibits that I like to make with these guys. Well, actually, that's not true at all. This is, like, regular standard for me. But what I decided to do was split it into sort of th three sections in a way. I started with the massive circular part of the enclosure, where, as you can see here, I'm currently adding a few guest facilities on the outside, which are sort of bleeding into it, but this way, it makes it connect, because one of the things that I always like to do when doing these kinds of builds, and I'll be doing a lot more as we do more speed builds, is my goal is to make sure that I build these for you guys in a way that sort of allows it to be interpreted as its own section with guest facilities and in a way that allows you to connect it with other spaces because if i did this as like an entire park this would take a long long time and that's not to say that it didn't take a long time no 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 this took quite a while in fact and as you can see i started spreading out a little bit further on the back side of this enclosure after doing this guest section but now i'm working on the towers but the other two sections that i would make actually inspired me for adding other dinosaurs to this exhibit which while the main feature of course would be the tarbosaurus itself or actually three tarbosaurus my other dinosaur I wanted to include was the Monolophosaurus originally. The reason that I chose Monolophosaurus was mainly due to the fact of the episode introduction, which showcased um, Darius being trapped in the tar well, not really trapped, but stuck inside of the Tarbosaurus's nest, which was quite an interesting predicament, I must say, but he wasn't waking up alone. No, 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 he had a friendly guest of a monolophosaurus that immediately tried to pounce him and such before being slain off-screen by said Mama Tarbosaurus. However, this led to a little bit of an issue for me with um, adding it to this exhibit, because the idea which we later will get to where I add some logs and such to separate one of these sections of these branches. As you can see here that I have it with the main circular section and then two little branch parts that when you're in the guest facility you'll get to view from into those sections. I ran into a little bit of a concern while I was building and that was, was the model officer going to be able to go underneath because I wanted to design it in a way that that one section which would end up being the left side of this would be specifically for the safety of those um, smaller dinosaurs. And so I had a backup dinosaur in mind. I was thinking like either something like Dryosaurus, Homalocephale, or Lystrosaurus in case Monolophosaurus was slightly too big. And the reason I was worried was because Monolophosaurus was bigger than the average raptor and such. I think it's smaller than Utah Raptor, so I think it was going to be okay. Spoiler alert, it was. I found out when I started adding them to test it out at the end of this, but unfortunately, well, not really unfortunately, but the, my biggest issue was like I was worried that 
they weren't going to be able to fit, and it wouldn't really fit with the sort of theme that I was going for, where it was like one little safety sector. Now that we have like the guest section lined up for the building itself, I mean the enclosure, I started working on the outstretch, which this is the area where I always make a section that is still isolated to this guest area, but is still targeted to connect with the rest, as you'll see later on. And if I'm correct in my editing, I will hopefully have added a little picture by now showcasing my original drawing concept, because I always like to draw little concepts for like these little enclosures and such. And now I get into my logs and such, and getting them set up and such, in a way that they're not like creeping into too much of the enclosure, but also not into the guest section too much. I want to make it flow nicely. And this is actually one of my favorite ideas to do with like large carnivore exhibits. I like to make them look highly secure, but very like aesthetically beautiful. And what I'm doing here is making a secondary fencing around here, which really, since I'm in sandbox and stuff, doesn't really serve a purpose for security purposes. But what I like to do is I like to make these little sections so I can both fancy myself and also fancy the enclosure, which you're seeing I'm making some cubicle spaces in between the fences, which there I'll put some Jurassic Park pylons and such. I usually do light sometimes, but I figured these ones would be a lot better because they're of stone as well. And also guys, this is where I just want to point out that I really hope that in the future Frontier, if they're listening to our pleas, will add the lagoon lights to land because they would be so helpful here. Like imagine like those shooting up to the sky or into the enclosure, that would be so gorgeous at night. But for now, I just used the pylons and to make sure that they sort of stood out for guests and such, I also made them viewable as well from both ends. That way it's like a way for us to get little creeps inside the enclosure, but also at the same time, keeping it secure and enclosed. And also like, guys, I'd also, guys, now that we're like, you know, a couple of days, or actually as of this video probably coming out, a couple weeks, if not a full, or just a full week probably, I want to know which um, carnivore is your favorite so far, guys, and also, what do you think about this DLC as a whole? How f high do you rank it? So far, I'm saying that it's probably one of our best, like, I think it's definitely better than the previous one for sure, and now, as you can see, I'm finally adding the logs and such properly this time and I start to make sure that they are separated because I want to make sure that the Tarbosaurus does not get in but anyway what I was saying before I just went off track again was what are your thoughts on this DLC and also guys are you happy with what we got are you hoping that we get more and such and where you guys stand on like what you're expecting us to get for the future I think the next DLC is probably or pre or dinosaur pack is probably going to be something like a herbivore pack similar to the first game but also a cretaceous one which means we may be a lot closer to getting our micro serratus very soon now as you can see here i start to make a little viewable section which i originally was not going to do this because i wanted to um encourage people going into the little corner sections to see the little branches of this enclosure, but I figured it made sense because I wasn't making a viewing section specifically for the center part. So I went against my original judgment and I decided to open it up, which in hindsight makes a lot more sense. If I had have added a viewing vent or something, or at least a viewing tower, then maybe I would have kept it as originally planned. But since I didn't want to add it, it just didn't make sense really, because that's a whole section that's just not going to be viewable. If this were part of a larger park and not just for the sake of this video, probably I would have logically done it so that I could view it from a tower further on in the back or in the front, perhaps, or even to the sides, as the raptors would say. Oh god, I'm running out of breath, guys. But realistically, logically, 
logically, guys, it just wasn't going to cut. So I decided for the sake of this video, I would have a viewing section in the front. But if you're doing this as part of a whole park, I would have recommended like in your back section behind this exhibit, make a section that would allow you to view into this section. Because yes, you can view from the logs technically, but only to a certain extent, especially with this little mountainous hill that I start adding. Because I wanted to make sure that from the viewpoints, each part felt pretty separate from the others and such. And this is the area where like it's like the main beauty section, nice peaceful and such. And eventually I would build like a little nest section. Then I start to get the other section set up. The centerpiece is much more forested and then closed off in comparison. And when I get to the next section, I decide to use the Malta um, trees because they're like my favorite and I decide to make it more open and dirty, but, you know, more, I guess, savannah sort of styled, because those trees kind of remind me of it, even though it's from Malta and such. And also I had like a little green patch and stuff, which I guess if I had have added Lystrosaurus as well, it would have worked there too, but, you know, I didn't, so, oh well. Now it's time to get into the rocks, which... My god, I love using the rocks and stuff to make, like, little points and such. Works really well for pterosaurs. Now comes me being the detail freak that I am. And this is why this video is slightly longer than I originally planned it. Like, even though this video is only, like, around half an hour long for you guys, for me, this took hours and hours and hours. And you may be wondering, why did it take you hours? Well, until this point, guys... Let's just say it was pretty easy up to this point. I had the blueprints for like, you know, the enclosure, separating it with the logs and such, getting the guest buildings and stuff. But when I started doing the detail work of like decorations, maybe this is my OCD being a lethal bastard as it always is, but this is where things started to get slow. Because you may think right now, you know, it's perfectly fine, but if you see, like, me with fountains and such, you see the little jittery pauses. Even though, like, we're going, like, eight times the speed, guys, just to be clear. So this is fully sped up. Now, before I continue, let's talk about the nest. And this is a little tip that I've seen a lot of people, like, use from Evolution Square. I love using it. Added some little plants and foliage as best as I could to make it look like, you know, the Tarbosaurus just put some dead plants around to keep her eggs nice and warm, and then I added some larger rocks to sort of, like, entomb it. Because, like, you know, in the case of, like, a Tyrannosaur, like, at least from the novels, they would have them in, like, little mud mounds and such. But since I don't have the space to do that, I decided to just go with, um rocks and such. And also this was me being like a little annoyed with the fact that we had no mud terrain, which is still really unfortunate. I really hope we could get that because it'd be so nice and useful around certain parts. Now is where the details come into work. And as you can see, I just start laying down the little concrete barriers because these are like little guest sections of plants and foliage and such sort of to separate the views and such one side is like for the buildings one side is for the view at least when you're in certain sections then it's sort of a flip around but uh, this is where i got really really frustrated with my brain because as you can see here, I'm like, no, there's too much of a gap. I can't work with that. But I don't want to restart all of the path just to make it work. So eventually my brain will be just like, you know, just fill it in here, sneak it behind here, use the illusion tactics, or, you know, just improvise with lights or something. <laughs> and also, guys, I'm sorry if I sound like I'm rushing for, through all of this and such for, like, the voiceover. It's just... <laughs> my dad is put on the dark knight and like it's one of my favorite movies and like with some of those movies i just like i hate what he watches it without me and such and that's one of those movies and such so right now i'm just my brain is like you've got to finish this you just got to get through this other half and such just finish it i oh my god why don't why can't i just tell my why can't my brain just tell me guys like you know you're gonna be done this 
any time, and then you'll be able to watch whenever you want. But my other side of my brain's like, but he's watching it now, and so could you. But anyway, where where was I actually in regards to Jurassic World Evolution 2 Tarbosaurus? Oh yeah, that's right. I am actually working on the um, little planter sections again, which... I mean, I say that, and I haven't even put a single plant. Actually, that's a lie in itself. I've just put two benches with planters there. And I'm putting planters right now, so I'm a big fat liar, even while I'm talking. Which, wow, jeez. Joker has made me completely corrupt. But, as I was saying before, you can see how I'm like, oh yeah, this is not working. Like, you know, there's too many gaps and such. I just put lights there, and now I'm resetting on some of my previous ones, which... I'll probably end up doing the same one, do I? Oh, no, not exactly the same, just one light this time. And, oh my god, this this voiceover has gone over the rails, guys. But, I guess while we're waiting for me to finish with the planters, because I think the next part that I work on is the circular bit before moving on to... Uh, what do I move on to? I think it's the hotels. Well... I just want to quickly just talk about a few things with you guys and like just say I want to say thank you to all the support that's been going on in the last few weeks with the DLC and such. The channel has been on an increase in subscribers and views lately. Like I know that basically this whole year has been shall we say a disaster for the channel like I mean, I have not done as much content and such. I haven't been in the best state of mind and such for certain bits of the year. I mean, it's nowhere near as bad as it was last year with, um, at least for my state of mind, because, well, there were some incidents that happened. But, you know, in the last few weeks, a lot of good stuff has happened, and I think it's really showing how I am with the channel as well, which... I know we're working on the monorail section for the circular bit, which, oh my god, that was a hassle in itself. But, I just want to say thank you guys to keeping up with support as best as you guys can and such. I know I haven't been giving as much content, but I think with all the good stuff that's been happening recently with this DLC, the news on Jurassic Park Survival, which, oh my god, that was awesome news, and... Considering that came on my dog's 11th birthday was definitely a win in itself. I gotta say, thank you again. Now, back to your regular schedule dialogue, or voiceover. Now we get into the guest section that I would say is not really a part of the enclosure, per se, or like the enclosure guest section. So if like you are done with that then you basically have reached the end but this is the part that I always build to connect both of them a way that makes it like okay so now it's not completely on its own but it's not completely connected because I mean I'm doing this on a tips park so like realistically I have a few enclosures actually here like one from my monorail tips video one from an upcoming tips video which technically should have been out weeks ago but Oh well, minor detail on that, but I mean, you can see how it's like connecting, like I've got um, this little circular section, monorail and such, and I decided to go with the classic style of using the gates, which I know I'm using the um, closed gates and stuff, but I always use it for like these kinds of viewing points because I don't like the one without the gates, when it's like this. If I'm using it straight on the path, then yes. But otherwise, no, I stick with these ones. Which also kind of reminds me, now that we're working on the Jurassic World side, how come we haven't gotten a Jurassic World version of that yet? That's one thing that's boggled my mind, actually. Has anyone else been thinking about that? Or is it just me? I don't know. But now we get onto the outer side of, I think we're on the Jurassic World side of this little circular bit? I could be wrong. Well, no, we are on the Jurassic World side. Yeah, you can see from the shape of the inner path. We're on the Jurassic World side, which this section I went for more of a um, biosyn sort of feel because I always like doing this with um, little themed parks where I theme sections based on Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. If I'm doing it on both, then I always separate it by like foliage and such. So 
if I'm doing it on a jungle map or something, I'll use like the proper jungle for like Jurassic Park or if I'm doing it for Jurassic World, I'll do something like Biosyn Foliage or stuff. Just a little weird thing that I like to do. Now we're on the um, Jurassic Park side, which I'm also putting the John Hammond statue in as well, because I figured, you know what, it's kind of thematic. Like, we're using the newest of the Tyrannosaurs to enter the franchise, at least I think. Well, actually, I think it's the only... No, we have three Tyrannosaurs. We have T-Rex, Tarvo, and Morris Intrepidus. In this game, we've got a few more than that, obviously. But, like, I figured, let's use a John Hammond statue just to use it for memories and, like, you know... That's the piece of the past, now he's looking on to the future and such, which, I mean, for most of us fans, we could say it's kind of a downgrade, because I know Tarbosaurus is probably not the most liked of the new dinosaurs and such, but I still really like it and such. And now we get on to the inner monorail, which also, if you notice, the um, circle is technically not properly shaped, or actually, more accurately, the monorail is not accurately spaced out because some of these spots are far more gapping in space, but I mean, guys, I even though you only see like two attempts with this, it took me like multiple attempts to get it like this because the monorail, like its snapping feature is kind of messed up. Like it snaps, but then as soon as you click, it sort of jerks for some reason, like how you do with the senior items. I don't know if it's just for me or something, but for some reason it always shakes. Like, you see it a little bit with um, decorations and stuff when sometimes you plant them, they just do a random shake. It sometimes does that for the monorail, but it did, did that for me multiple times, so I guess that's why it was like that. But as you can see, now we are finally moving on to what is undoubtedly the proper outer guest section, per se. This is where I kind of didn't really need to do this. This was just me um, wanting to use more of the new decorations, as you can see, because I'm using the sun beds or beach beds or whatever the heck you want to call them. They have so many names in my brain. But I start adding them and such. And this is the part where it's like, this is properly outside of the enclosure, because in a way, this is kind of a mistake for me to build, but I figured I would keep it in for a little bit of a tip for you guys. If you're doing something like this, don't do it the way I did, even though, like, it looks awesome at the end, like, I, I not to toot my own horn, but the problem with this that I realized when I was building it, actually, not even after finishing it, while I was building it, I realized because I had done the um, circular section, it kind of separated it too much, I think. Like, it's fine as an aesthetic piece, and it works in some cases, but in the case that I was kind of going for, it would work better for a herbivore exhibit. You know what I mean? Where, like, because you can't really see past it into, like, the enclosure at all. You can only see, like, the guest sections as well, which I guess is kind of... It kind of works in a way, like, it's pretty similar to how the hotels and such are for Jurassic World, to be honest. Like, the only thing you see there is the lagoon, so, I mean, I, I guess it works, actually. I, maybe it's just me. I don't think it works entirely the way I wanted it, but it definitely would work much better, in my opinion, if it were a herbivore enclosure. I think I'm right in saying that. But... Now is where I get into the final test of building, which is the last little guest section that you see, which is me just, you know, working my fancy, trying to make it stand out, which kind of is a little weird. Like, it kind of looks like I tried to do a flower, but it looks more like a shuriken. I think I made it as a shuriken, but part of my brain right now is thinking, did I try to make a flower, or did I... what did I try and do? And then we finally get into the section that really is of branching off to it, because now I'm going into guest sections where, like, facilities are connected to the hotels, and these little path sections that split off are specifically designed so that way you connect to the hotels, but also the outer ones 
they are directly going into the rest of the park. If this were like a full park and such, this is just like a tips video, but you see what I mean. You've got to make sure that you have this plan where you do do both visions. Like, do the enclosure, but also branch it off into a section that like, you know, is for connecting to the rest of the park. So I, I guess it makes sense that I did build this, but I don't think I needed to make it this excessive. And we are actually reaching the very end of this build, because now we just start adding some of the new fountains and such to help with the ground view of this stunning path design. And guys, that is the Tarbosaurus exhibit. Oh my god, I'm out of breath, so I need to take a quick breather. Ooh, oh, that's much better. Yeah, like, this Tarbosaurus exhibit is actually one of my favorites that I've done in quite a long time, actually. I want to get more into these tips videos and such. I already have two tips videos that are in the works as of doing this voiceover and such. They were actually supposed to be coming out before this, but, you know, delays and such, and also stubbornness as well being another one. That's mainly the number one, really, but this is one of my favorite, like, little exhibits. It it represents everything I love with carnivore exhibits. They're fancy, they're secure, and they're strange. I love doing all three of those things with my parks, and this one absolutely works with it. It gets a little story behind it with the inspiration from Hidden Adventure for the Tarbosaurus's nest and the Monolophosaurus being a little creature that, like, you know, is trying to avoid it and such. And also, like, this guest section that feels very enclosed but also very open at the same time. Absolutely awesome. Not to not to toot my own horn, actually. I'm, now that I'm listening to myself, I'm like, wow, geez, ego much? But no, I, I just love the way that these enclosures are. It's My inspiration for them comes from many sources. I love using the monorail for like weird displays and stuff. I know that it's not for everybody, but you know, I think it works here. I could be wrong. Maybe some of you guys have even a better idea. And guys, I want to do more tips and tricks for you guys in the future. I also want to do more for the new species. I'm probably going to do some for the next species probably after Christmas because I got to work on my Christmas video as well for you guys along with other stuff. We've got tons to go over for the channel and such now that we're finally in a resurgence in the channel. Like we're actually starting to get back on track. We've got more content for you guys. I say we but it's only me actually making content so let's retrace that. I've got more content coming for you guys. I've got loads of ideas. I'm finally getting into them. And I hope that for 2024, along with Chaos Theory, more for Jurassic World Evolution 2, and maybe even Jurassic Park Survivor, we'll have loads for a gr greater future. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video and all of my rambling discussions, I would appreciate the like. And if you want to see more tips and tricks and even a new series coming soon, I would appreciate the subscribe as it supports the channel even more. And if you're feeling generous, I've got a Patreon set up for anyone who feels a little bit extra generous. And once more, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as a little bonus, here is a last little bonus clip of a Tarbosaurus being a lovely prankster. Again, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you later. Bye bye